so that he'll keep the SEC out of the BC's title game thing lasted all of a week. Great job. Other conferences. Johnny Football hands you the keys to the kingdom, and you say, no thanks. We're perfectly happy with our non-crystal footballs and deep-seated inferiority complexes. You had your chance. All you needed was Kansas State to beat the team that entered the game with the worst total defense ranking in the FBS and Oregon to beat the team that usually beats by three touchdowns. But you couldn't handle that, could you? Now you're probably one Notre Dame loss to USC and one Florida win against Florida State away from another all SEC BC's title game. But fear not. Seven teams have a realistic shot at playing for the national title, and only three of them are from the SEC. Here's a quick look at the road for every undefeated and one loss team still in the mix to reach the BC's title game. Notre Dame 11-0 beat USC. That's it. You're in. Alabama 10-1 beat Auburn on Saturday. Then beat Georgia in the SEC title game. Georgia 10-1 beat Georgia Tech on Saturday. Then beat Alabama in the SEC title game. Florida 10-1 beat Florida State on Saturday. Hope for a Notre Dame loss. Failing that, hope Alabama or Georgia loses Saturday and then wins the SEC championship. Oregon 10-1 beat Oregon State. Hope Oklahoma beats Stanford, giving the Ducks the PAC 12 North title. Hope Notre Dame loses to USC. Hope Florida loses to Florida State. Hope Georgia loses Saturday to Georgia Tech. Or hope Alabama loses to Auburn, likely making LSU the SEC West champ. Beat Ukla in the PAC 12 title game. Hope Georgia wins the SEC title on December 1st. Or hope to Los LSU is in the game and beats Georgia. If Florida did not lose to Florida State, hope human voters engage in massive anti-SEC conspiracy. Florida State 10-1 beat Florida on Saturday. Hope Notre Dame and Oregon lose Saturday. Hope Alabama and Slash or Georgia loses Saturday. Beat Georgia Tech in the ACC title game. Hope the team that wins the SEC title has two losses. Hope Texas beats Kansas State. Engineer the electromagnetic pulse that shuts down all computers throughout the country the night of December 1st, making computer rankings impossible to tabulate. Failing this, sell the no computers concept to NBC and watch the MAPA show in which no one has indoor plumbing but everyone has perfect teeth. Kansas State 10 to 1 Hope Oregon loses to Oregon State. Hope Notre Dame loses to USC. Hope Florida State beats Florida and then loses the ACC title game. Hope Alabama and Georgia lose Saturday and the SEC produces a two-loss champion. Hope the men in black neuralizer is an actual thing. Attempt to erase the memory of the Baylor game from as many minds as possible. Beat Texas. Except for Notre Dame, the three SEC teams have the clearest paths to the title game. So cheer hard for the Irish. SEC haters. They're probably the only hope you have left. Pre-game adjustments Nebraska at Iowa Watt Friday if the Corn Huskers win, they win the Big Ten Legends division and will face Wisconsin for the league title on December 1st. If the Hawkeyes lose, nothing happens. Unless they want to pay conference $250,000 a month until 2020 to not coach. LSU at Arkansas Friday Sometimes strange things happen when this game is on Black Friday. Remember 2007. That Arkansas win didn't keep LSU from winning the national title, but it provided us with a post-game interview that might have been the best in SEC history until LSU's Le Miles topped it last week. Either Le Miles or John L. Smith will take the mic after this one, and there is a good chance one of them will be dropping in before he walks away. West Virginia at Iowa State Friday after spending the first month of the season climbing into the top five, West Virginia still isn't bowl eligible. But if last week's loss to Oklahoma is any indication, the Mountaineers have finally figured out that Tavon Austin is an interstellar tailback. Austin won't have the element of surprise here, so he probably won't top the 344 yards he gained on 21 carries, but knowing Austin will carry doesn't necessarily mean the Cyclones can stop him. Georgia Tech at number 3 Georgia, if not for USC, the Yellow Jackets might be the most commonly adopted team on Saturday. It's anybody's guess as to which Georgia Tech team will show up. Will it be the one that hung 68 on North Carolina or the one that got shelled by Middle Tennessee? That may not matter. If Georgia plays to its potential, the Bulldogs should roll. But if not, check that list above to see who might be cheering.
Michigan at Ohio State, the Durnar Robinson at tailback plan adds a new wrinkle that should make the Wolverines fairly tough to stop, but with no Fitzgerald to Sane as a counterpunch, the Buckeyes may be able to adjust quickly. The rest of the Big Ten should pay careful attention to this one. If Michigan can't beat Ohio State right now, the rest of you don't stand a chance come next year. Oregon vs. Oregon State Oregon should score more on Oregon State's defense than it did against Stanford, but the Ducks may give up more with Beavers receivers Brandon Cooks and Marcus Sweeten snagging passes. Cooks and Wheaton compare favorably to USC's Mark Lee and Nelson Abhaller, who combined for 319 receiving yards and three touchdowns against the Ducks on November 3rd. Auburn at Alabama Plenty of the fans of the other schools on that contender list would love to see Auburn beat Alabama, but that would take a miracle. And Gene Chizik is all out of miracles. Florida at Florida State Florida quarterback Jeff Driscoll has recovered from his ankle injury and will start at Doak Campbell Stadium. This probably doesn't matter, because no one playing quarterback is going to enjoy this game. The Gators rank fourth in the nation in total defense 281 yards a game and third in scoring defense 11.73 points a game. The Seminoles rank first in the nation in total defense 236.3 and fifth in scoring defense 13.09. The start could be field flipping Florida Hunter Kyle Christie or Dead Eye Florida State kicker Dustin Hopkins. Oklahoma State at Oklahoma, the Sooners got shredded by West Virginia's Austin last week. Now they'll face another up tempo offense that can run. The only difference is the Cowboys play much better defense than West Virginia. Stanford at Oklahoma, Jim Mora faces an interesting choice here. He can rest his best players get the book on Stanford and then play the Cardinal again six days later with a conference title on the line. Or he can go full force at Stanford, win and face Oregon and Eugene for the conference title. Missouri at Texas A&M, Aggies quarterback Johnny Manziel's last chance to impress Heisman voters will come against a team that ranks in the middle of the SEC in almost every defensive category in conference play. Manziel needs a good, not great, game to solidify his Heisman chances. What he doesn't need is a multi-turnover game. South Carolina at Clemson. This game is getting very little attention for a matchup between two teams that are a combined 19-3. But this should be fun. Game Cox defensive end Jadavian Clowney foot might not be 100%, but he is expected to play. He'll be chasing Clemson quarterback T.G.H. Boyd, who, despite the lack of attention, has matured into one of the nation's best passers. Notre Dame at USC. I love USC quarterback Max with Bravado. Sure, he's a first-time starter facing the number one team in the country. Sure, Notre Dame's defense is tied with Alabama's for number one in the nation in scoring defense 10.1 points a game. Wittick still sort of guaranteed victory in a radio interview this week. Wittick and the Trojans will have a lot of other fan bases behind them. And if Wittick makes his prediction come true, that's how legends are born. Read more http colon flash slash sports illustrated dot cnn dot com flash 2012 flash writers slash and the underscore staples slash 11 slash 22 flash week 13 walk a thrust slash index dot html number sign 9 zz 2 ltm gg 3m